Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss stoichiometry. Specifically, we're going to talk about percent yield. Today's essential question. What does the percent yield of a reaction measure, and how is it calculated? For today's lecture, make sure you have both your periodic tables and calculators handy. Percent yield. What is it? So percent yield is a measure of the efficiency of a reaction carried out in the laboratory. So basically, how well does the reaction happen? Um, so far, what we've been calculating is theoretical yield. Theoretical yield is stoichiometry calculations used to determine the amount of product expected. So it's a prediction, okay? It's a, it's a calculation and it's a prediction. And that's what we've been doing so far, right? Just on a piece of paper. How much, if you have this much of a reactant, you solve, plug in some numbers and guess or and calculate how much product you should have in a perfect world. So if everything exactly went perfect, you would get the theoretical yield. Okay, actual yield. Actual yield is the amount of product that actually was actually produced in the laboratory. So how much when you actually mix the reactants, what really happened? Not just what you hoped would happen, which would be the theoretical yield. Percent yield is a comparison of the amount of product actually produced with the expected amount. Um, and most often, the actual yield is less than the expected yield. Okay, on to how do you calculate percent yield? Well, first step is a step we've been doing pretty much every day with our stoichiometry. You cal calculate the predicted or theoretical mass or yield of the product using the BCA table. So we're going to just do our stoichiometry problem and figure out how much product we think we should make. Um, and just as a hint, if you're given the mass of more than one reactant, then you're going to first have to figure out the limiting reagent. So then, and from there, you can figure out the theoretical mass. Because remember, the, 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 the mass of product made is dependent on the limiting reagent. Okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to compare the actual yield with the percent yield using this handy-dandy formula here, which is actually fairly easy. It's the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. And in case you forgot, the actual yield is the one that, that is actually measured in the laboratory, okay? It's what was really, it was what was really made. And the theoretical yield is your cal calculated calculated product. It's, it's your guess. Well, guess is not a good word. It's your calculated product. Okay, it's your, it's the perfect world. Okay, so percent yield is what you really made divided by what you hoped you would make, mathematically speaking, multiplied by 100. Okay, well, let's try it. So the example is, what is the percent yield if 13.1 grams of CaO is actually produced when 24.8 grams of CaCO3 is heated? Okay, so we're going to be using the BCA table. And before we move on, let's re when people can get confused when there's multiple numbers. Um, we, have, we have the 13.1 grams and the 24.8 grams. Well... The 13.1 grams goes with CaO, which is a product. Okay, so that, this is, this 13.1 grams is the actual, actual yield. Okay, that's what really happened when we mixed together 24.8 grams of calcium carbonate, or, or put together, bleh, when we heated up, looks like we were heating up, um, 24.8 grams of calcium carbate, we actually made 13.1 grams of calcium oxide. Question is, how much could we have made in a perfect world? So, this is where we use our BCA table. So, we start with writing our 
balanced equation, which is CaCO3 producing CaO and CO2. All right, and let me get rid of some of this extra stuff here. So our given is what? 24.8 grams of calcium carbonate, um, but it's in grams. Remember, we cannot use the BCA table for grams, so we're going to need to convert from grams to moles. All right, so let's do that on the next page. So we have 24.8 grams of calcium carbonate. So 24, oh gosh, what did I just say? There we go. 24.8 grams of calcium carbonate equals X moles of calcium carbonate. Oops, try that again, calcium carbonate. Okay, so um, this is a, um, a mole conversion problem, so we will set up our grid and write our known in the grid over one. And now we need an equality that has grams and moles in it. And for that, we have one mole of calcium carbonate equals the molar mass of cal calcium carbonate. Remember, that means that we're, we're going to add up the masses of calcium, which is 40.08 grams, and carbon, which is 12.01 grams, and three oxygens, which is 16.00 grams. And when I did that, I got 100.09 grams of calcium carbonate. And we need two digits after the decimal because each of our molar masses has two digits after the decimal. All right, so now we need to put one of these at the bottom and one of these at the top on our grid, setting them up so that we can cancel the units out, which means the mass needs to go on the bottom. Oh, I keep wanting to write a two. And the moles are gonna go on top. And then let's double check. Do gram CaCO3, cross out gram CaCO3, they do. So now we need to multiply and divide, and that gives us um, 0 0.2477, and some more sevens, um, grams, nope, sorry, moles of calcium carbonate. And for sig figs, we have three there and five there, so we're going to use the smallest number of significant digits, which is three. So we're going to keep those three, having to round that seven up to an eight. So that means we have 0 0.348 moles of calcium carbonate. And we can now put that number into our BCA table. So 0 0.348 moles. All right. And we know that we're going to start with none of the calcium oxide and the carbon monoxide. And we, since we only have one reactant, we'll be using it all up. So now we need to fill out our, our, our um, I can say this, our mole ratios. And what's really cool is that these guys, uh, I'd like to say they're all one, but this is not balanced correctly. So let's fix that. All right, I take it back. It is balanced correctly if I had actually put the subscript there. Okay, so now you will note that our coefficients are all one, which means our mole ratios are all going to be one over one, which is going to make the math here so very easy, which is cool. Okay, so now we need to figure out how much um, calcium carbonate changed, and it went from a starting, starting amount of point. 3, 4, 8 moles, and an ending amount of 0 moles. And so the only way that could happen is if we lost 0 0.348 moles. So that is going to be our change factor all the way across. 
um, but the product ones are going to be positive because we're making it, right? So we're gaining it. All right. So now that means that CaCO changed by 0 0.348 moles and um, carbon dioxide also changed by 0 0.348 moles, which means, um, be remember that after is before plus change. So 0 plus 0 0.348 for both of them means our final amount in moles of calcium um, oxide is 0 0.0348 and same for carbon dioxide. All right, so remember we're trying to find the percent yield of um, calcium oxide and they gave us grams which means we need to turn our moles, remember this here, this is our calcium oxide, the units are moles, so we need to turn those moles into grams. So let's do that. So we have 0 0.348 moles of calcium oxide, and we want to know what that is in grams. So we are going to, again, make our, our grid and fill in our known over 1. And we need to find an equality that relates the units moles and grams, and that would be 1 mole CaO equals the molar mass of CaO. So we're going to add up the mass of 1 calcium and 1 oxygen. And that gives us 56.08 grams. And two digits after the decimal, so two digits after the decimal in our answer. All right. Now we need to take and put one of these at the bottom and one at the top of our grid and matching it up so our units cancel out. So we'll put our one mole CaO at the bottom and our 56 0.08 grams of CaO at the top. Let's check that we set this up right. Our units cross out. So now when we multiply across, I got 19 points, only supposed to be three sig figs, so 19.5 grams of CaO. All right, so this number here that we just calculated, that is our theoretical, except for it would be nice if I could spell, this is our theoretical yield. Okay, this is what we, in, this is our in a perfect world. Okay, if everything worked out perfectly in the lab, this is what we would have got. So the question is, what is our actual yield? What actually happened in the lab? Well, they tell us here that we actually produced 13.1 grams of CaO. So, oops, forgot the O there. All right, so our, our next step is to figure out the percent yield. So how efficient was our, was our lab? So percent yield, remember, is actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100. So Actual yield was 13.1 grams, and the theoretical yield was 19.5 grams. Our grams cancel out, and we're going to multiply that by 100. And 
with three sig figs, if I did my calculations correct, I got 67.2%, which honestly is not all that efficient, right? I mean, only 67% yield, that's not that great. So if we, were, if we had actually done this lab, we might want to think about, I mean, we're wasting money only getting 67% yield, 67% um, of what we thought we could get. So, you know, if we were actually doing this lab, we would probably want to find a better, more efficient way to do that. Anyway, that's how you calculate percent yields. That's it for today. Have a good one.